Hey guys, it is NCSFan001 here for another one of those weekly trophy list updates. Today's date is Tuesday, May the 2nd of 2023. So that means this video will have covered the week plus a day of April 24th through May the 1st of 2023. Of course, this one's coming out a day or so late purely because it took me so long to upload and export and do everything for the 601 through 700 platinum trophy video which is nearly six hours long so it took like i don't know four hours to export out of adobe and then another like 12 hours to upload i thought i had good internet maybe not <laughs> But uh, yeah, so that's the only reason that went up on Monday, of course. So this trophy update, I'm going to try to keep this one a little bit more brief given just how extensive the video was from Monday. So we're going to try to keep this relatively brief as I only worked on two games this past week, but I did finish both of them. So it was definitely productive overall while also working on editing down the rest of that 601 through 700 video. So... The first game I finished was Ty the Tasmanian Platinum Trophy Tiger. I don't even know what accent that was supposed to be. So this is Ty the Tasmanian Tiger HD. This was a really, really fun game. Definitely enjoyed this one. Definitely would recommend playing this one. Additionally, it is a relatively quick and overall easy Platinum Trophy. I'd say it's like a maybe a 2.5 out of 10 in difficulty overall. And... Uh, I would say like 12 to 15 hours, maybe a little bit faster if you really know what you're doing and played the original versions. I had never played a Tie the Tasmanian Tiger game before this, so this was actually my first experience with it. And it was a good time, I'm not going to lie. I definitely had fun playing this one. So you're going to get a couple of unmissable story trophies here, so those are pretty early on in the game. Then you're going to get several boss fight related trophies and I believe that some of these can be done in either different orders or no I believe that this one maybe is a unique not really unique but it's sort of a more hidden of the eggs that you have to collect because basically this game is a collectathon platformer so each area has you know seven or eight of the eggs or whatever they're called that you have to collect and they're sort of the main collectibles are like stars in Mario 64 or golden spatulas in Battle for Bikini Bottom. And then you also have secondary collectibles like cogs and little orb looking things. I think they're called opals, but I just often just call them orbs. Stuff like that that are extra collectibles you have to find that work like socks or coins or whatever. So I believe that this is one of the optional random eggs that you can collect throughout the game. So I don't know if this one's actually required to beat the game, but it is required to get the Platinum Trophy, so you might as well do it anyway. That is the final boss fight of the game. And then you have to get 100% of everything. So basically this means that you have to get all of the 72 of the eggs. So there's whatever it is, 7 or 8 per level. I think it's 8 per level throughout the game. And they're accomplished by, like, getting to the end of the level, uh, going off the beaten path and killing a group of enemies, finishing a time trial somewhere, stuff like that. So basically, just finish all of those and you'll get a majority of your 100% completion. There are also several other things you have to find throughout the levels. There are cogs that you have to find. There's 10 of those in every level. They're used to unlock more rings. Then there are the opals, which are used to unlock an egg in each level. There's 300 opals per level for a grand total of 2,700, though most of them are generally pretty easy to find. And then there's a couple other collectible types. There's the bilbies, which there's five of those per level that are usually a little more well hidden. And there's the picture frames, but we'll talk about that later because it's actually not required for this trophy because you'll hit 100% before you found all the picture frames. Completing all the time attacks, there's one per world. These are usually just racing another character and it's needed to get one of the eggs in each level. These are usually very easy. They, they really shouldn't cause you too many problems. There's just one per uh, area of the game. The rainbow scales, these are found throughout the hub world, the Rainbow Falls area. There are 25 of them. I was able to find all of them without any sort of a guide, but I'm sure that there are guides out there if you manage to get stuck and can't find one of them. The Zoomerang, Multi-Rang, Infrarang, Mega-Rang, Kaboomerang, and Chrono-Rang are all unlockable rings. You will get these by finding all of the cogs in the game. So again, there's 10 of those per level. And you'll get all of these rings by finding all of the cogs. 
Finding all the bilbies, again, there's five per level for a grand total of 45. They are required to complete all of the eggs in the game and complete the 100% in the game. Some of them are pretty easy to find. Some of them are a little bit more off the beaten path. I would say it would be helpful to have a guide up next to you while you're playing through this game if you didn't play it as a kid, which is how I was. So you might want to have a guide up just in case you ever get lost somewhere or can't figure one of the areas out. I did have to consult a guide for a handful of the collectibles because a few of them were very well hidden and I couldn't figure out how to get to them. The picture frames, this is going to be probably about the last trophy that you get in the game because you're only going to get about a third of the picture frames by 100%ing all of the main game levels because most of them have like no more than 20 in them. But then there's another 246 spread across the two bonus worlds that you only get once you beat the final boss. So the bonus worlds are not particularly long. You can finish each of them in like 10 minutes, so they're not particularly time consuming. But each of them does have 123 frames, so there are quite a few to find. The frames are well hidden in normal levels inside of semi-invisible boxes. You can use the infrared to see them a little bit better but otherwise they are pretty well hidden so it might require a little bit of backtracking to find all of them you probably will not get them on your first playthrough you'll probably have to go explore each area a little bit more the opals again you'll have to do that as part of the 100 percent there's 300 per level for 2700 total this is a boss fight and then this is in the jungle level you have to there's one of the eggs when you're helping i think her name is shaza and you have to defend her by throwing your ring down at boulders that are being used to defend against about 10 enemies that try to cross a bridge this is pretty easy just keep it in mind that it's a pretty heavily missable trophy if you're not careful now nothing's truly missable because you can always just replay levels as needed but it, it might take a few minutes to get to the later parts of certain levels that are larger like this one. So just keep that in mind if you want to speed up your cleanup process. Uh, hit Lenny with the Flame Ring 15 times. I don't remember which one he is. He's one of those specific characters, though, that you can hit. I unfortunately can't remember which one he is, though. Shaza is the sort of girl character, whatever you want to call her. And she's actually tied into this trophy right here in the jungle world. Just go up to her and hit her with the Flame Ring. Uh, in any of the time attacks, equip the Krona Ring instead of Best Time. This one I feel like could kind of be missable if you're not careful. Because if you're really not careful, you might set a really good time on every single one of the time attacks. And then you get the Krona Ring very late in the game and then you have to go back and do the levels again to get this trophy so i would recommend saving at least one or just really any one of the time attacks until after you get the chrono ring and once you have the chrono ring just go do that last time attack with it equipped and you'll get this trophy automatically the secret ending is unlocked by having 100 percent completion when defeating the final boss which is simple enough get to nine lives as well as run out of lives those are both fairly easy you should be able to get to nine lives without too much of a problem if you're playing reasonably competently and then running out of lives you will probably have to do to yourself but it's it, i mean it's easy enough to do just you know keep jumping off a cliff somewhere it's simple enough bite a leech this can be done in the jungle world i believe this one at any point when you are asked to help someone for a side quest for one of the eggs just say no to them and you'll get this trophy there's plenty of opportunities and you can go back into levels after beating the game and i believe you can still turn people down there get all of the rings again that's going to require completing the story and finding all of the cogs dying in rainbow clips is a little bit tricky to do you have to basically jump off of the high ledge and hope that you take damage each time it'll take a few drops to kill you i don't remember where this one was but it's just a random miscellaneous trophy that i got by accident get a thunder egg from a turkey using a super bite that's by holding circle from a turkey when a turkey's carrying one of the eggs around and there's only a couple of opportunities to do this i did this in the jungle world but i think there's one or two other chances you can do this Defeat 200 enemies with the bite is fairly easy, but it takes a little bit of time. The 75 with the Zappy Ring. The Zappy Ring is actually really, really good once you get it, so this trophy is pretty easy to do. 100 enemies with a Flame Ring is pretty easy because you get the Flame Ring early in the game. And burning 50 Cricket Bats, you can really only do this during the Road to Cass's boss fight. So pretty much you go into the Cass portal in Rainbow Falls and then just play through the couple of levels through the final boss fight. And you'll make really good progress on the trophy there, but you'll probably have to replay it one time to get to the 50 
attacks on the cricket bats. The cricket bats being the weapons that the some of the enemies use. So overall, very fun game. Would highly, highly recommend if you have not played it. I'm sure that I will someday play Tai 2, but I don't think I'm going to stream it because according to Ghost, it has just a crap ton more collectibles. So the other game I worked on this week and finished was Horizon Forbidden West with its new Burning Shores DLC. So I guess we can look back at the main game and see how things, if anything's changed. So you had to reach level 50, which was fairly easy, nothing much to worry about that. It wasn't super grindy or anything like it was, I think, in the first game. You get several story-related trophies. All of those are story-related trophies and unmissable for finishing the game's 17 story missions. Then you have several side mission related trophies. All five of these are tied to either singular side quests or side quest lines. So multiple side quests in a row. This one is for climbing any tall neck. There are six total, which is for this trophy. And it reveals large amounts of the world. This is all, all like pretty much always worth doing in any playthrough just because it reveals huge parts of the map to you. So clear all six tall necks for those trophies. You have to complete all the rebel camps. There are six rebel camps. And when you clear the last one, you have like a mini boss fight from what I remember. But just clear all six of them. They're basically like large versions of enemy outposts. You have to reach the core of all the cauldrons. There are four that are not story related plus two that are story related. But only the non-story related ones actually count for these trophies. So clear the four that are just out in the open world for these two trophies. The hunting grounds i want to say there are four hunting grounds with three trials at each so 12 total trials where you have to get at least a quarter stripe but you can get up to a full stripe so getting just a quarter stripe is super super easy especially if you're because that's another thing about this game you can play through it on the easiest difficulty you can play through it on the story difficulty which makes stuff like this just extremely easy i did not play it on story difficulty i played through it on easy or normal difficulty at any given time but never above that until the dlc uh kill one of every type of machine will get you four more trophies you're going to get most of these naturally by beating the game and doing all the hunting grounds but there might be a few extras that you have to seek out at some point or another there are a couple that are fairly rare there's this the specters that are only in a few of the story missions there's the corruptors that are only in a few of the missions as well you have to override and then ride a charger bristleback and cl you have to override and then ride a charger bristleback and claw strider nothing particularly hard there you have to focus scan every type of machine in the base game there are about 42 of them initially this trophy was missable because the specter and the specter prime were considered missable but supposedly the game has been updated to where they're like automatically added to your journal if you go past them without scanning them which is really nice i just can't prove that because it's not something i've ever done before there's also the corruptor which is extremely rare so whenever you encounter it during one of the story missions scan it there so you don't have to worry about trying to find it in like the arena or anything glide on uninterrupted for 60 seconds is very easy just glide down from any high point you can fly up with your flying mount to do it speaking of which you have to complete two of the four flying mount quests for this trophy you have to get first place in two out of the four gauntlet runs which are basically races that are slightly annoying but just winning two of them is not too difficult completing all the salvage contracts for one contractor there's like four or five contractors so that's pretty easy uh, take out four of the rebel outposts there's like 15 of these so you have more than enough uh, opportunity to do all of this the relic ruins clear three of them out of the eight or nine that there are complete one of the five arena challenge sets uh, win against two different machine strike opponents out of the 15 or 16 of those that there are that's the sort of chess type game that can be really difficult on the higher difficulties Obtain one weapon from every weapons class is basically unmissable when you're doing everything. Inflict every elemental state is pretty much unmissable. Three different melee combos is unmissable while going for a later trophy. Stealth kill on ten machines is super easy. You can actually knock it out in like the very first mission. Detaching a hundred components is also super easy, especially if you're playing on the lower difficulty. It should come fairly naturally. Picking up five different heavy weapons. Uh, this will probably take a full playthrough to get, but it's not particularly hard as there's about seven or eight different heavy weapons you can pick up. And you have to unlock and use the overrides for ten different types of machines. This is going to require you to clear a bunch of the cauldrons and then override ten different types of machines. 
This one is related to that previous trophy with the melee abilities. Basically, you have to finish all of the melee pits. There's three or four of those throughout the game, and once you finish them all, it lets you take on a special secret melee boss at a different area of the game. Fully upgrade any one Valor Surge. You'll have more than enough skill points by the time you're done with everything. Fully upgrade any three weapons and outfits is fairly easy. Just upgrade low-level ones for these two trophies. Then fully up or just upgrade each of these pouches at least once. Again, just upgrade any one that's fairly cheap to do. Equip a weapon with two coils. You just have to make sure it has two coil slots. You'll have to upgrade it enough to be able to unlock those two slots. Weapons technique for three different weapons classes should come naturally while you're upgrading all your different skills. You have to learn all the skills for any one tree, which is easy enough because you'll get plenty of skill points throughout the game. Then complete one of each type of collectible out of the, I don't know, there's maybe like 10 survey drones and 12 black boxes and 9 relic ruins, maybe 10 vista points and maybe like 5 signal towers or something like that. And then just use die flowers to unlock and apply any one new die. So the base game is a pretty easy platinum. Then there was the New Game Plus DLC. So finishing a New Game Plus playthrough is not a problem, but you have to finish one on Ultra Hard difficulty. And Ultra Hard is definitely challenging. There's a reason why it's one of the rarest trophies in the game. It is fairly challenging at times, but if you go in with the right equipment, it's really not that bad. Like, I mean, I would say that for me, it was probably around a 4 out of 10. I could see it being like a 5 or out of 10 if you're just really not well equipped for it. But it, it's not awful if you just have some idea of what to do. If you have the right equipment, there are certain weapons that are better than others. There's like the Wings of the Ten Blast Sling is well loved. A couple of the bows are really good. I actually use the Spike Killer, I think it's what it's called. The Spike Thrower weapon. That's really, really good. It's a legendary spike thrower. That one really, really worked well for me. So, again, it was like a 4 out of 10 for me. It wasn't too bad, but, I mean, it was. It still has a few difficult parts to it. This is the most time-consuming trophy in the DLC, though, unlocking all of the weapons, dyes, and face paints. This requires you to obtain about 125 champions tokens, which are earned by completing missions and other objectives in New Game Plus. So to do this, you can get about 30 of the Champion's Tokens just by finishing the story. And you can get a few more from clearing all of the Tall Necks. You get like two per Tall Neck. But then for the remaining 90 or so, you're going to have to farm them out by either completing various side quests, or clearing Relic Ruins, or opening the Arena I think gets you one. So it takes some a good amount of time, and because once you're playing on Ultra Hard, you actually can't change the difficulty from Ultra Hard down to anything lower, it, it's almost better just to do your playthrough on New Game Plus on Ultra Hard, just rush through the story as quickly as you can, clearing just the story, the tall necks, and maybe one or two easy miscellaneous quests, and then start up a second New Game Plus file after that, and on the new New Game Plus, you can focus on doing everything on story difficulty and have absolutely no problems with anything. Now, speaking of this though, there are a bunch of new Champions tokens that are available in the DLC. In the Burning Shores DLC, there's like 33 more tokens you can get in that DLC just by completing it and completing all the trophies in it. So it might be worthwhile to hold off until you play Burning Shores. Burning Shores was okay. I didn't think it was anything all that amazing. Like, I mean, it was fine. It's more of Horizon, but I didn't think it was anything all that incredible by any means outside of the visuals. So for the 100% in this game, in this DLC, for this one, you have to complete all six of the main quests. And then there are also three side quests and three like miscellaneous item related quests but i think you only have to finish the six main quests and the three like true side quests with one of the main quests just being a epilogue uh interlude type of mission that is basically just a cutscene. so just finish the nine sort of true missions of this dlc and you'll get the lone gold trophy you have i believe i think all four of these trophies are story related and unmissable from what i remember unless I want to say maybe three of them are store related and one of them is side mission related but all four trophies will come along the way to getting this gold trophy so just finish those six story missions and three side missions and you'll get all of that 
Uh, you have to learn all the new skills. There's maybe like two new skills per tree. But you can also now reach level 60, which you should easily get by the time you finish the DLC, as long as you were already level 50 going in, which you should be, because you're going to be fighting a lot of tougher and apex level machines. So nothing really too difficult there. You'll have more than enough skill points to purchase all the new skills and max out every tree. Uh, use Brimshire to purchase an outfit and a weapon. It's a new item. It's sort of like the Gemshire item, but it's a yellow color to it. So you're going to need to use it to purchase outfits and weapons. You'll find enough of it while doing some of the side quests that you shouldn't have much of a problem. Equip an Elite Coil. Elite Coils are a new orange tier level of coil. And on the orange tier level of coils, they may say Elite on them. That's what it's referring to with this trophy. You have to fully upgrade the Spectre Gauntlet, which I believe only requires just one upgrade. The Spectre Gauntlet is a new weapon. It effectively functions as a hybrid machine gun and rail gun, so you can switch between the two firing modes. It's pretty fun to use. It's not the most effective thing in the world, but it is kind of cool to use. Then you have to reach the core of the new Cauldron, which is a bit of a process this one has some unique puzzles to it but again i don't like the cauldrons so maybe that's just me there are four new types of machines in the burning shores which are not particularly hard to find you should get this pretty much naturally while doing the rest of the trophies there are five pangea figurines and then you have to do a little quiz with them after finding all five of them but you can look up guides for all the collectible types the delver trinkets i want to say there's maybe seven of these You'll find the seven of them, and then you'll go to wherever the treasure is. The aerial captures, there are six of these. This trophy is known to be quite buggy, so I would recommend having a couple of backup saves before you start looking for the aerial captures, just in case something glitches out on you. Then you have to grapple strike five different unique machines. This one requires you to put a machine into the knockdown state, which is the sort of white circle with the three stars inside of it. When you get one into that animation, you can double hit X to grapple at them and then hit R1 at the right time to do a full grapple strike. It just means, it doesn't mean five different types of machines, it just means five different machines. So you can do it, you could, te you could technically unlock it on five different burrowers, but just you couldn't do it five times on the same burrower is the kind of thing that I'm getting at with that. Five machines with the Spectre Gauntlet while gliding is a little bit annoying because you can only fire a few shots at a time and then you have to be in the air to do it. I recommend doing it against the little Sting Wing or Sting Spawn guys that are the new really weak little enemies that are basically like robot bees that are, you know, the size of a person. Those are good to do it on because they're pretty weak. And speaking of that, you have to destroy 50 of them as well as five of the Bile Guts, which is another new type of machine. This one should come naturally while going for the other trophies. So, I mean, the DLC was fine and all, but it wasn't anything, you know, groundbreakingly incredible. The graphics were great, but the, the gameplay is more of the same, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's nothing, you know, um, incredible. So, level 822, 29%, 25,617 total trophies, 705 platinums, 4,578 gold, 6,776 silvers, 13,558 bronzes. I love how I said that this wasn't going to be that long of a video and I managed to drag it out like crazy, I guess because Horizon is kind of a long game. So anyway, plans for the upcoming week. I am finally going to get started on the Division 2, so we can hopefully have it off the bingo card within another month or so. But that is the only game I currently have plans to do during the month of May. Because now that Horizon's done, and with Resident Evil 4 and Ty being done, it's really just Division 2 during the month of May. And then June and beyond, you've got, you know, GTA 5, if I ever truly decide to go back to it, as well as Shadow of the Colossus, COD Classic, Outer Worlds, Resident Evil 4 remake on PS4. I'm holding off on doing the PS4 version until we get whatever the Separate Ways DLC is going to be, and presumably another piece of DLC as well. Maybe we get, like, Assignment Ada, more of the Mercenaries, maybe even a new piece of content or something. So I'm sort of holding off on doing that until we get all the DLC released for the game. But yeah, really the only plan right now for May is a Division 2. That's the only game I really have on the docket right now for this month. 
we will see if that changes at any point but that is currently the only major one on the list and resident evil 4 whenever it eventually gets the separate ways dlc because i i would be very shocked if that dlc didn't get trophies to it this time so yeah that is going to be it for this video guys please like favorite share comment subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already uh, video schedule should be pretty normal this week again. I don't know if there's going to be much streaming during the week because I don't really have a game that I want to stream right now. And I really need some time to start working on not only the Vision 2, but on a couple of the old videos. Namely looking at one for Resident Evil 4 is the next one I'm going to do. And then one for Fallout 3. And then we still got to do one after that for South Park and another one for Ty. Which the South Park and Thai ones won't be particularly long because neither of those Platinums took that long. But the Fallout 3 one is going to take quite a while because that was a pretty long game. And I don't think anyone on YouTube has done that style of video for Fallout 3. And not many people have done one for Resident Evil 4, surprisingly, at the time this is being recorded. So we'll see how that goes. So yep, uh, thank you guys for watching and I will see you all later this week for some more content. And of course, we'll find something to stream this weekend.